Invincible Rummy. A coral-addicted hooligan of the Dozer faction who believed himself an invincible demigod. The watchdog of R.A.D.'s front door whose fate was cut short by you. A man who will be better known for how he died than how he lived due to his iconic last words. <laughs> but what if we were to alter fate? What if the fate of Rubicon was in Rummy's hands? What if... Okay, I don't know if everyone's intro will be this dramatic as we ascend through the arena rankings, but hey everyone, how's it going? Today we will be seeing if we can beat Armored Core 6 as the one and only Invincible Rummy. The only rule we have for this run is pretty straightforward. Be at least one ending of the game while only using his AC loadout. With the exception of the Ice Worm mission, of course. I'm also personally doing this with a pair of Thrustmaster T1600s as opposed to a normal controller or a keyboard and mouse. I've been playing this way since my New Game Plus run, and I absolutely love using these things. Now, I don't know how much Coral it takes to convince oneself that they are capable of taking on the world with a shotgun so bad that the game outright tells you it's technically not a shotgun, and the chainsaw with the worst hitboxes I've seen in a while. But yeah, Rummy decided to equip that pair of weapons with the worst melee arms available in the game. Now, I won't lie, in the right hands, or I guess on the right arms, the chainsaw can be an absolute mm -hmm. monster of a weapon, and it definitely was what carried this run, but later, I may try and make a YouTube mm -hmm. short that's a compilation of all the attacks that whiffed, just to give you a slight idea of what I was dealing with. Anywho, to get on with things, the first two missions aren't even remotely a challenge as most of you would probably expect, Though, this was probably my longest time spent annihilating the Dafeng squad due to the shotgun's extremely slow reload time. After this, I took on the Tester AC and Transport Helicopter missions, which didn't really have anything worth mentioning, so we're gonna move right along to this rider. Here we touch back on what will be a recurring theme for this challenge, in that it's not so much that the missions are hard, but just drawn out and a bit tedious at times. I take out the three generators before making my way to destroy the Eye of the Strider. I was still able to beat the mission in a little over 5 minutes, though it definitely felt like it was taking longer than that. Next on our agenda is the attack on the dam where I found out the chainsaw just can't attack shorter enemies with its passive charging hitbox, but anyways, originally I wasn't even going to attempt to betray the red guns, but I did end up giving it a shot and it did not go well. I tried a handful of times and even though it's possible, I think I'm going to reserve the alt missions for characters that would make those decisions based off their faction or other reasons. Of course, this meant restarting the mission, so I just went ahead and rushed through the entire thing and left old Index Dunham, our next challenger, alive and well. We then skip through Snail and Walter's conversation and take our coral addled rage over to the wall where we can make our climb. This still isn't anything really to write home about, but we make our way over to the left, follow this damn looking thing, take out the Gatling guns, then the tetrapod before making our way inside. I do a little dance as I make my way up the elevator to begin the rusty rummy dynamic duo, and yeah, the whole fight is pretty trivial even with our limited arsenal. Once Rusty leaves the battle, it's just a matter of jumping over it and spacing out your attacks before we can secure the win with an easy first try. Then I struggle to take some pictures. After that, we mash through all our praises for clearing the wall, survey the wake of destruction left by Rusty, and briefly say hi to a future contestant that I dread playing in this challenge run. Anywho, onto the stealthy stealth boy who stealth mission. I zip past the sniper fire and proceed to give most of the enemies a taste of their own medicine by sneaking up on them. Here's also where I encountered one of the weirdest things I saw my AC do while attacking with the chainsaw. Yeah, I don't know if that ever happened to anyone else, but we clear out the rest of the enemies before making our way to the final fight, and by the way, once you get here, you can actually fly up here to get a better vantage point when everything first goes down. The fight, again, wasn't too hard, but it took a while to get everything taken out. Once the minions were out of the way, it was just a matter of taking its shield down before we shredded through its health in one attack. At this point, it was getting kinda late, and I knew Balteus was up next, so I decided to call it night to have a fresh start the next day. Once we started up, we slowly made our way to Sula, where I had a warm-up for Balteus. I honestly did make some sloppy mistakes and lose once, but this was only after the game completely cheated me out of an attack that would have taken out his AC, or at least left him in range of one shotgun blast. Please. Oh, come on! Why didn't that connect? 
Anyways, the second attempt went much easier and I took him out with the repair left to boot. We then acquire our Coral Spirit Waifu before we face Palteus and honestly, I wasn't too worried about this being doable as much as I was worried about it just taking a lot of attempts. But to my surprise, I was extremely close on my first attempt, like holy shit the amount of times I almost clutched this fight with a fraction of my health was insane. Unfortunately though, Oh, you fucking bitch! <laughs> Son of a bitch! That was not my good idea. That was not my good idea. Right here, right here, right here, right here. No, you got him! Fucking, I shouldn't have been trying to cheese that shit. Ah, if I can clutch this. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe, I don't know. No! <laughs> God damn it! Well, you're no average tra uh, tourist, are you, Balteus? Fuck! Mad stop! However, the very next attempt, the coral must have been hitting just right, because I am back in the zone and finding the right openings, though this time it had a fair bit more health once I got into phase 2 than the last run. At one point, I have a very close call with the flamethrower, but I scrape by with just enough AP to repair and keep up the fight. I accidentally heal a bit early not long after, but I take a hit that I would have healed from after anyway, so whatever. Oh, what? Bad stop! That last minute of us going back and forth with one another till I was able to secure that victory was just so satisfying, and I was feeling pretty good and ready to move on. Afterwards, the voice that calls herself Air convinces us to infiltrate the place that we should have been defending this whole time, but let's just assume a coral binge led Rummy to Walter's care and that him and Carla just don't realize that he's the same person? Eh. Anyways, upon arriving, we must have snuck in another hit of coral as I proceed to hallucinate and experience what I imagine to be some form of ego self of myself to determine which Rummy was the Rummy's Rummy to run. And of course, that would be Rummy. For some reason, my boss kept referring to me as Taurus, and that really pissed me off. So, I decided to take out a few of her MTs on the way up to her offer, but for some reason, she just locked me in a room with a smart cleaner. And alright, that's enough of that. I'm not gonna lie though, this is my second least favorite fight of the run. So, typically, the shotgun would run out of ammo when I tried to focus on the front opening because it had either whiff a shot completely or. It just moved its opening just out of the way, just right as I to hit it. The top opening was easier to hit, but there's a chance it would punish you with the magma, molten scrap, whatever you want to call it. Who knows? But on top of this, the reload time is just so slow that it'd lose most, if not all, of its ACS while you were trying to find the right opportunities to get in a shot that's actually worth using. It also does not help with the frustration when, after you do finally stagger it, your chainsaw goes through and does little to no damage because it doesn't feel like it when you can normally get close to like 6,000 if it actually hits right. Anyways, after 40-ish minutes I eventually had a run where things were pretty even as we traded damage, but over the back and forth I finally got it down to a point where I knew I had it and I'll just let this play out. Ah, uh, okay. Oh my god! No, 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 no. Oh, okay, I thought he was going for Well, he still will, he will, he will. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Stop! He knows, we're both like, he's trying to fucking get me. Can 
I do not want to waste any. Oh my god. I mean, mad stop! I'm so glad I managed to do that within an hour, because when I attempted this with the jailbreak set, it took about two to three times as long, if I'm remembering correctly. Now, I was gonna skip over this next part, because I really didn't expect anything eventful to happen while taking out the coyotes, but there was this honorable mention. And hey, look, I have victims. Oh, that was clean! I didn't know you could get to it one kick. I've never pulled off a double kick, nor a triple kick, but there you go, one after another. I, that's a first for me. <laughs> I'm just fucking everyone up. After the quick breather, we had another boss to look forward to, but I wasn't too worried about the sea spider since it was something I could actually have a reasonable fight with. We then make our way up the elevator before showing all the other dozers how easy it was to get across this without getting shot down by these lasers. We then proceed to make our way to the fight with the sea weapon. It smushes our original ride, and I take up arms against a no pun named being where I had a pretty sloppy first run, but still managed to get a pretty decent way into his second phase before eventually falling. The second time round though, I just outright played better. Minus one blunder that I definitely thought I was gonna die for. The fight was just a good fight all around, and to get the victory in two attempts like I did with Balteus after spending almost an hour with the cleaner was such a relief. There we go. Much easier. Oh my god, so much easier. Boss Lady Carla then shoots us off into the cold somewhere, and we move on to steal some data for the red guns, which is a pretty simple matter up until the ending. I really thought this part with the LCs would have taken a couple tries, and though it could have been cleaner, it went pretty well overall. In the beginning, I always fly up here to the right and just avoid the initial fight with the MTs altogether. Then here comes the lasers. From there, the lasers and missiles aren't a big deal if you know where to position yourself, and then you can walk back over here to try and get the jump on these LCs. The easier one didn't get taken out as I had intended because uh, my lock-on was off, but I salvaged the fight and was able to clear out the squad. Just like always, taking out the warships is pretty trivial. I thought they'd be a little harder when I first encountered them, but then I think about the scene from Gundam Origin where Char is just taking them out in his Zaku 2. Afterwards, I go through the tunnel to find another coral release, much to Rummy's delight, I'm sure. And after spending as much time as I can in that sweet, sweet corral, I escape and proceed to take on the job to assassinate Swinburne. The beginning is easy as usual, though. The fight itself is not too hard at all. I just keep myself right outside his range and manage to dodge 90% of the attacks he sent out. There was this weird moment where he just decided to not be staggered, but I still got him to beg for mercy where I had intended to do the real fucked up option where you're just like, yeah, 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 go, go run free. Be free, you little creature. And you just take him out anyways. But uh, I guess the prompt appearing made the attack go off because the overheat bar in the chainsaw was only halfway filled. Oh well. Despite missing out on being the lunatic I imagined Remy to be, we now move on to attacking the refueling base where I... Rave about one of the PCA LCs for just a split second before proceeding to wreak havoc across their base. Once the designated goodies are blown up, uh, oh, oh, hello there. Yeah, so fine-looking lands you got there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so so there's two LCs I gotta kill. Definitely not want the weapon of. And well, uh, the first attempt didn't go so well. I, maybe I was just distracted, but uh, my AC refused to use its repairs while I got double teamed in the corner. Not sure if this is a moment of my inputs being eaten or what, but uh, the second attempt didn't go much better. It was still really sloppy, but I did manage to pull through in the end by just the skin of my teeth. I cannot believe I survived that. The next fight with the cataphract, however, was pretty insane. If you're careful in the very beginning as it approaches, you can sneak in a kick, which can lead to this series of events unfolding. God damn! I also want to point out that, though I did intend to use this tower to block his beam, 
I did not know if that was actually going to work or if it was just going to pierce through and hit me. So, yeah. Afterwards, he just kept whittling down my AP with his giant arsenal of weapons, and even though I feel like I should have had it here, he somehow managed to avoid getting caught up in the attack and pushes me back before putting me in some real sticky situations where I was just barely holding on. Thankfully, I managed to pull through and repeated the perfect combo to finish the job and take out a major boss in the first try. Bam! First fucking try. Thank you very much. I'll admit, Catfract is fairly exploitable, but... That still felt great. Now, this next part in the run is quite literally my least favorite part of this entire thing. Navigating through the first part is always simple enough, but the PCA warship that shows up, well, this is not the kind of fight you want to come to with a chainsaw and a shotgun. The first attempt looked promising at first, but this thing would manage to just stay far enough away to make my shots ricochet so many times. From there, so many attempts, it was just slowly wearing away at my AP till I eventually died or knew I was about to, so I just reset from the checkpoint. In addition to this, here and here alone in all of my playthroughs of this game, this thing kept deciding to go out of bounds, which basically renders me helpless as he slowly picks me off while I smack face first into a red caution sign for the umpteenth time. Anyway, it took about an hour of attempts where I take out all the grunts, try to both stagger my use of the xylem drones, have them all go at once, just it didn't seem to matter what combo I use. After taking a step away though, having a quick breather, the stars finally aligned. And though it still was an annoyingly long-winded fight, I eventually secured the kill and was able to move on with my knife. Thank fucking god, holy fucking shit! Boss Lady Carla then requests us to defend the missiles she has set up, and though it takes two real attempts, uh, a swear-heavy, tired and frustrated me pulls through for this one last mission before finally calling it a night to get some rest. The next day, we continue our journey and channel a little bit of EO Fleming with the new stream-friendly jazz playlist before going char Asmable once more to take out all these warships. The LCs are easy enough before the last two warships show up to meet their demise, then the Rusty Rummy dynamic duo, or Team Rumsty, makes their second appearance. The first run, though, it had a really good start. I was kind of taking too much damage while making little mistakes with Mr. Melee Man. Rusty and I basically had the fight in the bag, but... Oh fuck, I should not be. I'm dead. Let's, let's get oh. Whoops. So, yeah, after that I kinda just popped off on the very next attempt and absolutely wiped the floor with the first guy before moving on to help Rusty with Zippy McMoves too goddamn much when we finally caught him in this nasty setup. Nice work, buddy. Glad you're on Woo! Combos! You see that? Teamwork? Resto, resto, dumb, rust, dumb, dumb, rust, dark, dusty. God, I'm dusty, dusted. Oh, After. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. After the spectacle of the ice war making its debut is finally over, we're able to move on to our next missions. I decided to get the fight with the Raven out of the way first and foremost, due to it being where I quit my jailbreak run, because that uh, assault armor to pile bunker combo could take you out at full AP, and after getting close a number of times, I just wasn't having fun anymore and called it quits with that. This run, however, I had a much better time. The first attempt wasn't my best, but they also kept narrowly dodging my attacks because they could recover from the ACS overload so quickly. I was still in high spirits though. The second attempt had a good couple moments of me catching them in their descent with my chainsaw, but the tables kind of turned and I was caught in a series of attacks by them, and uh, yeah, they had used their last repair, but uh, I couldn't get through it. There's a few more attempts that go through where I get close, but just can't manage the win in the end when I finally have this attempt happen. Stop shooting me. Oh, you fuck, why do you recover so quick? I hate that shit. So what do I even try? Nope. Oh, you can only be AP at Yes. Oh my god, come on. Oh! 
Oh, skip the two heels. I actually skipped all three heels, but yeah, that was really satisfying to pull off. I've never really gone to skip that many. Next, we move on and agree to help the lady in my head by going on a research trip. It's the most uneventful mission in the game, so I'll just move on to our Coral Fiend showdown between Invincible Rummy and Honest Brew. The majority of this mission is also nothing to write home about, so once we get past the lesser threats, we make our way to the hangar where we kind of get the jump on him, but not really. Oh, I'm the We kind of just end up in this box where we trade blows back and forth, but I come out on top as I'm able to deal more hits consistently. With that, we clear the fight on the first try, proving that Rummy is the superior Coral Head. Well, at least until I do Honest Brute's run. Next on the agenda was the Ice Worm, and fun fact, if you've ever had an AC loadout that you wanted to mess with without losing the paint job or decals, whether it's a pre-made one or something you've downloaded, etc., you can go in and act like you're going to change your paint job, then just immediately choose the option to discard your changes, etc. And bam, you'll have full access to all the weapons and changing out the loadout without actually losing out on anything that you wanted. I did this to equip the stun needle without losing out on Rummy's color scheme and whatnot. But anywho, as we all know, the Ice Worm is more of a cinematic fight than anything, so it goes pretty easy. It just took a bit longer than usual because I kept missing my shots. Oh, you fucking me. And after going through the phases, not gonna lie, I was a bit worried I was gonna have to do this a second time because I thought I wasn't gonna sneak in enough damage at the end, but I just barely managed to, thankfully. Oh shit, no, no. Okay, I was like, do not, not meet the, the damage threshold on this. From here, we have the three-part descent to get to the sweet, sweet crap. Uh, and honestly, for the sake of time, we'll just skip the first one since we're falling with style to avoid lasers. The next area will be our last encounter with Iguazu for this run. It's a pretty straightforward ordeal that only takes one attempt, and I'm in pretty good standing when it's all said and done. Moving on to the real boss of this mission, the Enforcer. Now this was a real pain in my ass. If it wasn't for the fact that I could actually have a real fight with this thing, probably be my least favorite fight. Between my shotgun and chainsaw having so many goddamn whiffs that should have connected. Ah, oh, this is what I mean. The hitbox on the chainsaw will just whiff so hard. But. It didn't help that it could just tear me apart with attacks from afar while avoiding most everything I threw at it while I tried to chase it down. And I'll admit, I reset quite a few times before I hit zero repairs or AP, and maybe one of those could have won it, but in the moment, it could get a bit frustrating. Pitch! God, yeah, that was doing decently at that time, too. Now, there were some pretty good attempts, but it wasn't till the last two solid attempts when I had just this moment of clarity where everything just panned out right at the stroke of midnight. The combo was always the same. Get them staggered, start with the chainsaw, do a shotgun blast as I assault boosted at them to finish with a kick, and then, if I'm lucky, get in another kick if the positioning allows. But it's easier said than done. This fight and another took about two to three hours each. So 
as this all plays out for this last one right here, I just want to give a big shout out to Moto Kid, Kawaii Senpai, and A Lime for all the words of support through this. I think this would have been a lot more frustrating and I just wouldn't have had nearly as good of a time if you guys weren't there. So just thank you so much. And last but certainly not least, a big thank you to my best friend Steven. Steven put out a Reddit post when I was first doing the challenge and I believe that's how a couple people found the stream. He's basically there for every single stream I've had and in general has just always been the most supportive homie since we were kids. So just want to give him that shout out. Now I'll stop raving about the homies and let this last part play out because it had my butt clenched. man yes Woo! yeah Woo! Woo! <laughs> and with my victory achieved I took the fuck to bed <laughs> the next day I was back with a fresh shave and ready to take on God or at least Ibis but first I had to cut the power to the laser barrier this was fairly straightforward, though the fight with the ephemera had me on zero repairs with me getting the closest I have to not making it out after winning the fight. Oh, yeah, I'm so good. Raven, you have to get clear. The fight with the Vespers was actually a bit more challenging than I expected, but it turns out you can kind of just stand in front of the door and immediately chainsaw one of them. Though Flatwell seems to not yeah, think that here? counts as an ambush. I didn't know you could do that. Whatever, dude, if I opened the door and someone jumped my shit with a chainsaw, I'd consider myself ambushed. Besides maybe Raven, each attempt had me struggling more than any other AC fight so far. Though, we did manage to pull through with less than 600 AC points Holy left. Shit, I close. also think this is the only time I've ever seen an ally get the slow motion kill. Next was the oh, inevitable once 1v1, now 2v1 with Rusty and Flatwell. The first attempt was going fine, but Flatwell's interruptions had me getting ganked left and right, and I tried to redirect my focus to him. I did manage to take him out, but Rusty was able to sneak away from a few of my attacks before taking me out. The second attempt, I decided to go for Flatwell as soon as he appeared to make sure he wasn't able to be as much of a nuisance, but afterwards again, Rusty just avoided the chainsaw in a couple spots, and... A few more attempts go by with just about the same results until I'm finally able to corner Flatwell and take him out while I saw the first chunk of my luck and my repairs. But it wasn't just smooth sailing after that. Rusty definitely made me work for this win. There were two very close calls, but I managed to pull through in the end with a combination I kind of did out of order, which wasn't as effective as it could have been, but hey, a win's a win. From here, we take on Gun3 and Matterlink, who actually took a few attempts due to getting double teamed, but eventually I was able to get them separated long enough to take out Gun3 before moving on to Matterlink. From here, I just boost straight over to the supply pack and brace myself for the fight against Ibis, as I knew this was going to be hell. I take a swig of my body armor and the cutscene begins. The first attempt starts really well, but it manages to narrowly dodge a shotgun blast that would have had it overloaded. I reset the attempt at one point because I had barely touched its health while I had already used up all of my repair kits. This then leads to a few attempts where I kind of get an idea of how to approach the fight when I was able to finally get a decent oh, start. On, I make some progress and manage to get into phase two after it just ever so slightly survived a solid combo but I took too much damage and I wasn't able to secure the win. Now, this all happened within the first five minutes. So 
I was feeling confident that this wouldn't take too long. Boy, was I wrong. I was here, dancing with Ibis, whiffing shots, just barely having my kick spaced out over and over and over. But within those deaths, I had so many attempts to get close that I knew I couldn't give up when finally... Oh, no way. Okay, 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 okay. 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 <laughs> I do not know how to get punched for that. know how I didn't get wiped out or at least severely damaged after it went supernova there but man what a spectacle of a fight it was such a relief to have that out of the way but I knew now that if I could beat Ibis with Mad Stomp that everything else in my way was just a matter of trial and error until I secured the win from here we're once again going to be subdued by Snail's forces before we move on to Jailbreak I was just going to skip over this but there's a weird bug where I, I literally couldn't do anything in the mission uh, the waypoint disappeared, there's nothing that spawned, so that took two attempts because of that, but, uh, yeah. After Big Boss Lady Carla saves us, she needs our help as they hack the Xylem Tower, which we breezed through on the first attempt before debating on which route to take. But at this point, it was getting late, and I knew the trials to come were not going to be anything to scoff at, so yeah, I decided to call a night once more. The next day, I decided that Rummy wasn't going to be putting up with Carla's shit anymore, and that since our brain lady had always been supportive of him, that we'd take on her request. I mean, come on, Carla couldn't even recognize Rummy as Rummy despite all of his accomplishments. All jokes aside, I did take Air's request and made my way to take out Snail because I could definitely see Rummy holding a grudge for the attempt to re-educate and imprison him. The first attempt goes well enough, but there's a number of points where I'm just outright cheated of a couple shots, and then he manages to take me out with his lance, so yeah. But the third time seemed to be the charm, as I managed to dodge enough of his attacks and punish him back just enough to secure the win. 
I was out of repair kits though, so I knew the first attempt fighting Carla and Chatty was going to be a... Yeah. So here goes the first real attempt, and I'm not sure if anyone knows about this, but at the start of the fight, you can actually just stand behind this pillar to the left and block all of those initial attacks before kind of forcing Carla to get stuck here, and then she'll waste one of her assault armors, and yeah, you can then proceed to take on the fight as you would normally. The fight went exceptionally well this time. Honestly, I was very surprised. I even got close to skipping her repair, but she managed to sneak it in still. Either way, the win was pretty easily secured after we moved on to Chatty. It makes sense now that I had full AP and three repair kits, but in truth, I thought that that was going to take longer, because the first playthrough I had, that took me a good amount of tries, but oh well. Now, after betraying the big boss lady, it's time to get Team Rumsty going for one last time this run. There's really nothing to note here besides the cleaner was a much easier fight with Rusty dealing extra damage and keeping his overload built up while I was waiting for the opportunities to get in close enough for my shots to mean something. Thankfully, this was all said and done on the first attempt because I did not want a repeat of earlier. I try my best to convince Rusty not to leave since I know something, I guess, with my coral clairvoyance, but... He runs off anyways, so we're left to take on Snail and the upgraded Balteas by ourselves. He goes on his usual spiel, calls us firm and all that good stuff, and the first one was going alright, but he ended up locking me into a combo where I couldn't repair my AC, so he took me out before I can make any noteworthy progress. Now, you want to try your best to avoid the bubble and plasma beams because they just tore me up over time, and typically they are what caused my downfall more often than his big laser attacks, though that wasn't to say that they weren't the cause of my death. I then began to develop a strategy where in the beginning I'd assault boost through the tunnel, shotgun him, kick, quick boost forward, charge up my EN, assault boost, shotgun, kick, and sometimes you could sneak in a second kick, and if you could get this to pull off just right, you would have his shield just about halfway taken down for the start of the fight. Essentially, this is the same formula, you just have to keep running until his shield broke. From there, you start off with the chainsaw before going back to that previous formula. Uh, you could go for a second attack from the chainsaw, but more often than not, it would leave you susceptible to being punished, and yeah. If you were lucky with where he was positioned during the break, you could sometimes pin him against a wall or a corner and get an extra kick or two, maybe a shotgun blast, and if you were really lucky, I mean really lucky, you could get the perfect window to get in a second overload, but it really depended on what action he took directly after he recovered. I think I only managed to make this happen once or twice with this attempt, so yeah, it was super promising until... I don't even care that that was the second one kind of fucking didn't do what I wanted it to. Oh, <laughs> that was slick. Oh man, those are some maneuvers. I need the homeboy from Spaceballs. Don't make any rash decisions. Keep my distance if need be, because I can do better at dodging this stuff. Stop, 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 stop. No, 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 fuck! Yeah. Also, weird thing I didn't experience until these recent patches, Homeboy Balteus will just strip teleport short distances. Like, it's like I'm playing PvP against someone who's using their hotspot for their internet. It's, it's weird. Um... Anyways, his second phase could also be a menace because if you weren't keeping tabs on your EN and he decided to start off with the double-fisted spirit sword, he'd just destroy you. Honestly, this is the move I always dreaded him pulling out, even on my good builds. I can sometimes manage to dance around it, but other times it feels like no matter how I'm schmoovin', I'm getting hit. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you, I spent three hours. Three hours trying to fight this guy. And though, there were some close runs between all the whiff chainsaw attacks and just how hard he'd punish you with any of his attacks. I couldn't pull out the victory that night. So, I went to bed with the battle loss, but the war was certainly not over. The next day, I came back ever determined to secure my victory over Snail and defy the curse hitbox of the chainsaw. And boy, did I. My first attempt wasn't amazing, but I managed to get him into the second phase before he took me out, so that was a good start at least. 
I had a few more attempts that went decent, but nothing too solid. Just more chainsaw whips, more hard punishes from everything. That is such a load of shit. Dodge. Wanna do something so I... Oh shit, no, 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 never <laughs> I did that bad. <laughs> when thankfully, within half an hour, the stars aligned again when I finally had the attempt I needed to clear this. All the hard work to get that coral for you, huh? No, huh? You to kill really? I can just keep him circled next to him. Get away from me! Rusty, I don't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> go, 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 go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Right here, right here, right here. Right here. Yes! Yes! We got it! Woo! Suck it, now. Get stomped by the Mets. Now, it was kind of a bummer that the stream dropped right as I got the win, so I went back and showed the replay, and god, it just felt so damn good to finally have that pass me. With Snail down, I knew victory was just within reach now, because as much as I hate to admit it, Walter was just going to be a pushover compared to that fight. Though right now I am grateful that it is going to be, in truth, I do wish that the fight felt a little more climactic, or that they at least gave him like a second phase of some sorts. It's my favorite route story-wise, but to just end it with the one last AC 1v1 after the grueling battle with Balteus 2.0, it just does leave a little something to be desired. Anyway, let's wrap this up. We take out the engines before confronting Walter for our final bout. The first attempt goes pretty well, but it had been so long since I fought him that I kind of forgot how his attacks went, but got reacclimated pretty quickly. Any reason I even like kind of struggled time, with I was surprised to find out that you could second. immediately overload his AC if you get him just right. And I was getting pretty good reads and punishes with two of his repairs down, and one left for me when, out of nowhere, he does over 9,000 damage and kills me. And I really had no idea what happened until I watched his back slow down. He does this first swing here that honestly should have hit me but missed, and while he's doing that, he's charging up both his right hand weapon and his shoulder missiles. He didn't even need them. 
immediately after that, he just unleashes the arm on me, and yeah, that, that probably would have killed me at full AP. Moving to the third attempt, it's close, but he somehow breaks free from one of my chainsaw attacks, though honestly, there is a good chance I would have lost there anyway with how low my AP was. Attempts 4 through 7 were just, I, I got punished hard each time, and yeah. Crazy 8 then came around, and I managed to get a really strong start and keep right on top of him with Assault Boost and Kicks. I was reading all of his attacks really well, but I did start to have some trades with them. At this point of the showdown, we were both on the last of our AP with no repairs left for either of us, but I kept my cool, and we went back and forth until I finally secured the victory against our old handler before narrowly escaping the Xylem. And with that, we proved that Invincible Rummy had the potential to be more than just the arena's bottom of the barrel joke of a coral head. With Carla out of the way and the second fire of Ibis prevented, this dozer can now retire and smoke as much coral as he pleases for the rest of his self-proclaimed demigod existence. Anyway, thank you to everyone who watched this and a big shout out to everyone who supported me during this run. I'll also sneak in the fact that I try to stream on Twitch at least every other day if not more, usually starting around 8pm central time if anyone wants to swing through. I'd love to see y'all there, truly. It makes it so much better of a time with the run. Um, but with all that out of the way, just thank you again to everybody and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care now.